Honeycomb. Hey everyone, this is Swizzly Bubbles here, and I'm a little bit upset right now because I just recorded a good portion of Hype Swap Friendship Simulator, and I got the footage, but none of it recorded. So, yeah, there was that. Um, luckily, I didn't do too too much. Um, and I guess this will be more. It'll be a less reactionary than usual, but I think you guys will maybe like this up a little better. Again, I'm still experimenting with the series, so please tell me what you want to see out of it. Um, I'd be happy to do whatever. I'd be happy to just do, like, sort of after the setup reaction, because I still have the footage from the original, but I... It's really dependent on what you guys want. So, let me know about that. And without further ado, let's just get into it. So, a few things you might have noticed right off the bat is that the logo is different. Um, in the original, it was just the Hive Swap logo with Friendship Simulator written down at the bottom. And that was a little boring, so they just decided to update it with the newer and more, well, versatile Hive Swap Friend Simulator logo. Another thing you may have noticed is that a day after recording this, Volume 2 actually came out. This is the thing about Hive Swap Friendship Simulator. With each volume comes two new characters, and they're going to presumably go through the entire troll call before Hive Swap Act 2 comes out. This is all filler content, remember, that's for the most part written by Andrew Hussey. So, this is all just going to be released one at a time, bit by bit, for whenever they release it. This next batch, and I'll show you right now, features Arisia, or <clears throat> voice crack, uh, it features Arisia, and another person named Scyanthon? I actually can't remember his name. I don't actually remember much of what happened in the last recording, because I, I usually just play it and then just goes right out of my mind. But you also might see that we now have a friendship selection screen. Right here we have our Dada and Diamond, those two I definitely remember, in Volume 1 of Bloodthirst and Bratwurst. In this next section, we have our two newer trolls in of Aesthetics, Crimson, and Otherwise. And these little descriptors are... These little descriptors... These little descriptors... God, I cannot talk today! We'll tell you a little bit about what's ha going to happen in each act. For the little that I do remember, I do remember Crimson plays an important part. Um, luckily, this isn't like a story-intensive game that requires you only get this one chance to do it and then you blow it. It's a dating simulator game with many different uh, ways in which you can do it. And because of that, I also know that these are a little shorter than usual. So going to time it out accordingly. Right now, we are going to be playing through Volume 2. I was planning on doing bonus episodes for these two, but I'll get to that later. I'll get to that at the very end of the video if you're curious. So, let's just get right into it. You stumble through the streets of a strange alien world. Ever since you crash-landed on this hostile planet, you've been desperate. Desperate for information, for provisions, and possibly for a bit of medical attention. Ah, a little bit of continuity there. So we're actually moving through the story of Hive Swap Friendship Simulator. Still don't know what's going on with that rocket, but I digress. Along the way, you've had some laughs, embarrassing missteps, and maybe even an encounter with alien meat products. You don't really want to get into it. What you do want to get into it is... <clears throat> Excuse me. Friendship. An entire planet of endless friend opportunities awaits you. Honestly, at this point, you'd make friends with one of those weird purple bushes. You're not picky. Wait, you see something in the distance. Perhaps someone? Right, they got... Yeah, they got new cards now. So instead of the silhouette with the shadow in the back, they actually gave us two new cards to play with. Like, the... Uh, it's a different setup. It gave us two new characters and a different setup for each. So, that's kind of cool. Um, we have Amicia, Amicia Erden, 
and Sarava Hermod. I can't believe I actually got that right and got, like, all the way through his name without saying that. Hussy, your naming scheme, the six letters, is weird. Just putting that out there, like, Christ. It worked for some of the other characters in Homestuck. Not so much here, especially with, like, a shit ton of NPCs to talk to. Um, I'm actually going to go with Amicia Erden first, um, because they're more my type. They're an artist type. So, yeah, see what happens. Also, oh, right, the background's different. And that, uh, we moved on to another section of town. Lo, what light through yonder weirdly organic architecture breaks. A small figure approaches. Oh. Oh my gosh. You are so... So far, you've swallowed quite a few insults in regards to your looks and intelligence level. You aren't really the type to let the shallow opinions of others get you down, but it's been kind of a rough day. You brace yourself. Cute! Oh. Oh! She gives you a sweet, sincere smile. I've never seen anything like you. It's giving me all sorts of new ideas. Boy, do you hope some of those ideas are about friendship. Now that you've got a taste for now that you got a taste of it, you are hungry for more. Oh, I, t I didn't even realize the implications of what he was saying here. You now that I've got a taste of it, I'm hungry. So am I just like trying to leech off of friendship? Because that's the that's the idea I'm getting here. That's what's being implied. You take a stumbling step forward, and your ribs remind you that all the, although the potential of camaraderie is enough to improve your mental health, it can't cure acute injuries. Oh, grammar. Ugh. I, I, it was a problem in the last one, but it, I see it hasn't been fixed here. Again, I'm, pr I'm pretty much going through this blind again, because I, I cannot remember what happened the last time I played this. It's, it's been a long night. Cut me some slack. Oh. You don't look so good. Come inside. I've been looking for new contributors. Contributors? Did she mean friendship contributors? No, that's dumb. Maybe she runs some sort of alien newspaper and she wants you on staff? She looks really young for that, but what the heck do you know about alien management hierarchy? You follow her to a nearby building and now that you're looking up for, now that you're looking up from your ravenous hunt for companionship, you notice that you've wandered into kind of an upscale part of town. There's a lot less garbage and people collapsed in the street. You see one of those spiky robot things, but it's watching a window instead of shooting a laser at a group of children. If that's not high class, you don't know what is. So they're actually kind of nice. That or they're distracted. Before you can follow her inside, she turns around in the threshold, blocking your way. Real quick, you don't happen to be an artist, do you? Artistry? Well, as a matter of fact, tell her yeah, it isn't exactly your whole deal, but you've been known to dabble, or tell her no, you've never had much of a knack for it. Um... Crap, I actually can't remember what happens here. Um, I'm more of an artist type, so... I think I'm actually going to be truthful on this. And tell her, yeah, isn't exactly your whole deal, but you don't own a devil. Oh, I see how it is. Well, you aren't going to snake ruin any trade secrets out of me. Uh, uh, I see. I see how it is. Goodbye. Oh. 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 Well, fuck you too, then. Well, that, doesn't that just suck? You completely blew it. Also, I'm gonna be a little nitpicky here. The quality of this is kind of terrible compared to the other one. I mean, okay, I get this is Hussey's style, and that he draws like this. Like, it's, it's not supposed to be well made, but like... God, this really does look like it was made in like five minutes. Less than an hour. You can even see... Right over to the left, they didn't even finish coloring in this window. Uh, what happened here? Uh, again, I'm an artist type, so yeah, of course I'm going to be picky about this, but like, this is kind of really blatant, to put it lightly. Well, 
Yeah, that's the end of that. So, yeah, now I remember, in the recording session, I... It was so, so super short, and I think this one was even shorter, so... Damn it! Well, I guess I can't leave you guys hanging. We might as well do another one, if you want. Or I could just leave this as a short episode and just let it be for now. Sort of just let you come to terms with that. No. No, I'm just kidding. I wouldn't put you guys through that. That was way too short, and that didn't give you any semblance of their character at all. It was just like, oh, you're an artist? Okay, fuck you, bye. So, we're gonna get into a little more than just that. So, yeah. Let's continue with the Misia. The girl's smile widens even further and you feel an unbelievable rush of joy. Have you finally found someone who isn't a total fucking maniac? And she brought up friendship without you having to mention it at all. It, brings a spring, it puts a spring in your step, or as much of a spring as possible with a broken arm and a misaligned torso. Amicia leads you into an elevator with buttons labeled in spiky letters that make absolutely no sense to you. The Alternian alphabet. Got it. You realize that probably nothing is ever going to make sense to you again. That's okay, your hierarchy of needs has adjusted recently. Your new friend, you are jumping the gun with this descriptor, but you are feeling seriously good about this encounter, stands in the corner of the elevator, wringing her claws. I should have known I was going to have company. I would clean up a little. It's been a while since I've met anyone new. You assure her that whatever disaster her house is, it can't be any worse than some other places you've seen here. Well, you kind of get what she means. She's wearing an artist smock that's covered in splashes of paint. I don't think that's paint. I don't think that's paint. Knowing this game and knowing the other stuff that I know, that, that ain't paint. Actually, it doesn't really look like paint, but it couldn't be anything else, could it? It's every color of the rainbow. Oh. Oh, goody. For, forgot about the thing she hung up on her wall with... With, um, <clears throat> with troll blood. Yay! The elevator door slides open and you step into a space that you were relieved to find is totally recognizable. A table overflows with messy palettes and brushes. Cloudy jars of water and sponges, several easels stand beside the windows to catch the light of the two moons, and a number of canvases lean against the wall, turned so you can't see what's on them. First things first. Amicia brings you over to a wall screen that looks way more high-tech than anything you have on your now-defunct spaceship. Tapping away, at the, tapping away at a series of unreadable symbols, she then indicates you should take off your sling. Oh, right, I still have the sling from the encounter with Diamond. Didn't think the game would actually remember that. Here, go ahead and stick it in there. She seems to want you to put your injured arm into a large hole in the wall, which you do. Because you are sure your new friend has your best interests at heart. No! The hole shrinks down like a blood pressure cuff, sending bolts of agony through you. You want to yank your arm back, but you don't. If, even if it's broken, you still like having it attached to you. Instead, you shout a lot and thrash your other limbs around. Oh, it's gonna cut off my arm, isn't it? Calm down, you big wriggler. It's like you've never seen a medicalizer before. If you don't stop moving, it won't work. Tears spill down your cheeks, but you force yourself still. You'll bear the pain, you'll do it for your friend. She's looking at you so hopefully, and she's so delicate and pretty, almost angelic. You look at her face and tell yourself it's all going to be okay. Finally, the hole releases, and you pull your arm back out and find it completely healed. You can move your fingers. It doesn't even hurt anymore. Hey, things are looking up. See? I told you. This is great! You are overwhelmed with the urge to celebrate. Be chill about it, or get excited and dance your new friend around the room. I forget which one of these doesn't end the game that quickly. Um... I... Crap, I really don't remember anything about what happened. Uh... Get excited? I don't want to be humble because she doesn't seem like braggers, but I think she'd be happy knowing I'm alright? You try to resist the urge to celebrate, and you fail to resist the urge. Um... You take Amicia by her tiny hands and twirl around the studio. Or you try to. You forget about your busted ribs. You sure are doing that a lot. 
You let go of a Macy and, careening, and go careening into one of the tables. Thankfully, not the one covered in art supplies. You hit the corner and go down onto your already incredibly sore ass. This is what you get for acting like a huge fucking tool in front of your new friend. Are you okay? Was that some sort of ritualistic rite of healing I've never heard of before? Uh, no. That was just me acting like a complete jackass. Writhing in pain. The ribs. They're bad, but I I'll shrug against the floor. Why not? Oh. Shit, not this again. Hi, Evey. Alright. Please. Please don't tell me we're gonna kiss, okay? I already had to deal with that from one guy. Please, just please don't. Please leave me alone. Amicia leans down and picks you up in a bridal carry, despite the fact that she's about half your size. Makes your ribs hurt, but what doesn't nowadays? Amicia lays you down on a weird, lumpy couch. Are you sure you're okay? You look a little... She trails off to nothing. She's looking at your left arm, which you have draped over yourself awkwardly to sort of try to hold your torso together. Color. At first, you think she means the color of your skin, which is different than her light gray. Then you think she means the truly fantastic buffet of bruises you got going on. But then you realize that in your prancing idiocy, you've managed to scrape up the inside of your arm. Blood oozes sluggishly from the wound. Amicia drenches a finger through it. You're half expecting her to put it in her mouth and for this to become a whole cannibal situation. Well, since you aren't the same species, it wouldn't really be cannibalism, but still. No thanks. Instead, Amicia just holds your finger up, the drop of blood trembling on the tip. This color. I've never seen anything like it! She dashes off to one of her tables, pulling over a sketchbook and dragging her finger down it. Your blood paints a rusty line down the center. She lets out a little squeal of excitement. Amazing! What, red? Not red! There's a million dirty little rusties swarming all over the city. Oh, so you were murdering people. Or rust bloods, or whoever. Great. I'm drowning in red. This is crimson. It's incredible. You must be some sort of mutant. You're really lucky I found you instead of one of the drones. Lucky? You? Ha. Ha ha. Yes, very lucky. The luckiest. Though, your arm is healed, and your kind of whatever doubtlessly weird weather happens on this planet. Maybe it means he's right. Maybe you are lucky. You close your eyes and try to breathe. Send yourself out. Really center yourself in your own body. Hmm, all that garbage. Number one from Homestuck. Never turn your back on the body, especially when they're right in front of you. Because... Then that happens. Why are you holding an axe? Then you open your eyes and, wow, you sure aren't centered anymore. In fact, you roll completely to the left as you try to get away from Amicia, who is back and standing over you with a giant axe. Watch out! Amicia grabs you, drags you back up onto the couch, and plants her hand on your solar plexus, effectively pinning you down. My what in the what? I still don't know what that is. I... I... Why do you have the axe? Please, just tell me. You'll hurt yourself if you keep flapping around like a... Like a beached blubber beast. You're gonna hurt me with that thing! What are you talking about? You wanna be friends, don't you? You wanna help me with my artistic aspirations, don't you? I don't wanna get murdered! I don't wanna have your artistic aspirations splattered all over, all over my face with the axe in it! I would like to keep everything intact! You get the feeling that she might be trying to manipulate you. Just the tiniest little suspicion. It's possible Amicia has recognized your intense craving for companionship and is trying to exploit it. You don't like being suspicious of a new friend, but that is a pretty big axe. I don't know what's got you so worried. I just want to show you my axe. Right. Show me. Okay. Oh, of course. Makes sense. It is a really nice axe. You hold out your hand for it, but of course it is too heavy for you and your hands are all sweaty and you fumble it. Fumble the really sharp weapon. Oh god, I got hit. And now there's blood everywhere! Oh goody! And it's growing on my screen. Oh! God, me, I'm such a dumbass. 
Macy tries to catch it before it's too late, and somehow, in all the wriggly struggle, you end up getting cut. Like, very cut. Across both of your wrists. How did that even happen? It's one axe! Did it just, like, slice against me, or did she, like, slice against it? What? How? By the way, the blood is getting a lot more shaky on my screen. And it's closing in, like, a lot more. I... I don't like it. Am I seriously just gonna bleed to death here? Like I said, I don't remember a lot of this. Why am I... I, I didn't remember the fucking axe! In fact, you don't think she could have aimed even better if she'd been trying. Oh. Oh dear. Hard agree. Don't struggle. You only hurt yourself more, silly. You don't want that, do you? No, you definitely don't want that, not after what a Butterfingers you've been proven to be. Amicia gets up and, to put the axe down, and you kind of lose track of her for a little while. You're bleeding all over her couch, and everything around you starts to go shiny and unreal. She comes back with a couple little jars that she uses to catch your blood. That's a good idea. You sure are making a mess. That's the least of my concerns right now. You wonder if they're specifically blood jars. They're like jam jars. Alien Jam. Space Jam. God, you love that movie. Why are you talking about Space Jam now? I'm bleeding out to death! It's been so long since you've seen it. Definitely the best PG movie about basketball. Am I seriously just going to go on a tangent of, about fucking Space Jam while my wrists have been slit? Way better than the one about- Way better than the one with the dog and the clown. Do they even have basketball here? You ask Amnesia. She just shushes you and brushes your hair back off your forehead. She keeps smiling and saying comfor comforting things. God, she's such a good friend. For too long, you do what's honestly a goddamn shock you haven't done before now. You pass out. When you come to, you are propped up against the wall in a weird way that you wouldn't love even if you weren't an invalid and both of your arms are jammed in the hole in the wall. The mad hole. The glory hole of well-being. The magic sphincter. You grunt and pull your arms back out. They're healed. Cuts on your wrist are just two faded pink lines. I forgot about that. I forgot about the, the medicalizer. You take a step away from the wall and immediately hit the ground. You may not be actively dying anymore, but you did just lose like half the blood in your body. Gosh, you're tired. Oh, right. I didn't even notice that before. Uh, I just suffered from extreme blood loss and low bro blood pressure. Yeah, I probably should be walking. A little giggle makes you turn around or roll over since you're still on the floor and probably not getting up anytime soon. It's fine, you've met worse floors in your life. Amicia is sitting at one of her easels, her hair pulled back beneath the scarf and little round glasses perched on her nose. A, excuse me. a drop of your blood sits next to her, and as you watch, she dips a brush in. I'm glad you're awake. I was a little worried I actually killed you back there. She laughs and you laugh along with her. It's very funny, actually. Everything is funny right now. It's probably the blood loss. <laughs> you ask her what she's painting. You, of course! You inspired me! Hmm. Well, right now it just looks like a bunch of red squiggles and some lines, but she only just got started. She's warming up. She sits there on her stool, looking at her palette and chewing on her lip buffly. She looks somewhat nervous. Actually, I want to show you something. Something I've never shown anyone else. She leaves up from her stool and crosses the studio. You roll to your other side to keep her in your line of sight. You really hope she isn't getting another Space Jam jar. She starts turning around the canvases one by one. They are all blank. Except for one, which is a little- wait, no, that's just a shadow. Every single one of them is blank. Good job, me. I really am such a fucking dumbass. You aren't sure you understand. You ask her if these are all just new canvases that she has not gotten the chance to paint on yet. Let me see a size. <sighs> no, I've had them for forever. I'm just... Not a real painter. There, I said it! She buries her face in her hands, talking from between her fingers. I'm looking at the other parts. The materials, the studio. I even make all my own paints. 
I just can never do the actual sitting down and doing art part. She just looks so despondent. You can do something, but you don't really know that much about art, and you probably can't stand up yet. You tell her that she looks like she's moving in the right direction, at least. You don't even have a studio or any brushes or stuff like that. Of course, you have no aspirations to being a painter, but you leave that part out. That's just it! I feel inspired for the first time ever. I think it has to be your messed up, disgusting mutant blood. Thanks! Take that as a compliment for, like, the second time in this playthrough. Probably shouldn't against my better judgment, but I'll, I'll, I'll take it. There's really no other explanation. She takes a knee by Okay, we're doing this again. Same animation, too. I mean, I get these were made in a budget, but... Starting to show a little bit of how lazy it is. It's like, just the downward motion again. Can't add anything else? Okay. They're cold, like she's been pressing them to a glass window in the winter. You should have just finish off the contributors quickly. Yep, she's been killing them. I don't have time to deal with a bunch of injured lowbloods moaning around my studio. I couldn't just use your blood up all at once. You're far too special for that. You gaze at Amicia. A mist has descended over your vision, and it isn't even the mist of imminent death. You want to kiss? You want to have some like weird quadrant troll stuff going on? Alright, we have some weird troll sex or something, because that's what this game seems to be heavily implying. I have to keep this precious blood safe. I think you might be my news. You will never escape. Well, at least she's happy. I mean, I'm trapped there forever, possibly losing blood, but I have a friend now. A friend is not going to let me out of her sight. And I might be, you know, kind of half awake from the blood loss, but, you know, friend's a friend. Hooray! Uh, well, that was certainly something. Oh, she's happy, I'm happy. Let's just put it that way. So, with that all done, out of the way, I think I'm going to call that an episode. Um, next episode, we're going to be meeting with C Savannah. Savona? Savano? I'm not good with names in this series. I think you all can attest to that by now. Um, if you've been watching up to this point, thank you so much for sticking around. There's going to be more content on the way. I am going to get back to doing more edited videos. This is just a fun little side thing. And I'm glad you guys are all enjoying it. And I'm glad, like, you... I've just been, like, commenting just, like, um, like, about me being a murderer and all that. It's, it's been fun. It's been a really fun experience so far. So, that all being said, take care, everyone, and I will see you all for whatever I plan next. Catch you later.